We're speaking with uh, Dirk Gates, who's the CEO of Xeris. Dirk, how are you? Doing good. Great. Could you uh, just go over uh, the reason you decided to uh, found this company? Sure. The company got started back in 2004. At that time, we had a vision that Wi-Fi someday would be powerful enough with the .11n standard on its way to eventually and finally replace wire in the enterprise as the connectivity of choice. The challenge at the time, though, no one was producing an infrastructure that was capable of supporting a world where everyone had multiple Wi-Fi devices with them all the time. To use traditional uh, consumer-style access points would require so many access points, it would be unmanageable, uh, and you wouldn't be able to have them operate in a fashion that would provide enough capacity for uh, an enterprise user. So we started looking around, and, and interesting enough, as I was driving around one day, I noticed uh, a cell tower. And anytime you drive around and see a cell tower, you'll see the cellular industry solved this problem a long time ago. They don't have just one radio whenever they deploy a, a, a cell uh, tower base station. It's got a, mo a, a series of radios right. uh, configured in a radial fashion, sure. each with a directional antenna covering a different section of town. So that got me thinking, why can't we do the same for Wi-Fi? Why can't I take and build a Wi-Fi base station that they can bring inside the building, have multiple radios, each with a directional antenna. The benefit would be I have many more radios in the air to cover my Wi-Fi users. At the same time, I'm putting up far fewer devices. I've got 75 80% fewer things hanging off my ceiling, and I've got better coverage and better capacity. And that was where the, uh, the concept for the Wi-Fi array came from. So it sounds like a win-win for, for everyone involved. It's, it's got great economic advantage and great technical advantage. Customers love it. So in terms of the, the size of uh, the, the customer or the, the number of users you can simultaneously have, what, what are some of the, the numbers that you've seen? So our, some of our biggest challenges are when you get to trade shows or conventions. Uh, and we were recently selected by Microsoft, their conventions group, their, uh, uh, what was the, the Oh, Microsoft events. Let's start that again. <laughs> they use call Microsoft. Microsoft. So, and a good example would be conventions or, uh, or large auditoriums. Microsoft's events group recently selected our equipment, and they held they hold their software developer conferences uh, annually, and have upwards two three thousand users in one room. And so we deployed uh, a handful of these arrays at one of their conferences, and had simultaneous had three thousand simultaneous. Wi-Fi users on a network in one room. Wow. And that was, how many of these did you have now? In that, in that particular case, I don't there know. There were 12. There were 12. 12. 12 devices, one room, 3,000 users. And I'm sure there were heavy users. Oh, very heavy users, yes. yeah. But you can, there's actually a, a video that you can see on our website about that. But, yeah, these are very heavy users, um, and it was uh, sometimes upwards of 6,000 users, depending on which conference they're going to. This is for their um, IDF and their... Uh, PDC events, uh, but very high capacity. And, and they've tried it in the past and have never, they'll even tell you, it's, it, every single thing they've tried in the past has failed. They've never been able to get upwards of 500 users, let alone 3,000. And they, they, the only problem that they have, they, they keep um, saying, is they wish they can get more users on it so that they can see exactly where that breaking point is because they haven't reached it yet. Wow, it's very exciting. Yeah. So what's next for the company? So the company's vision. Our, our, our mission, our goal, is to replace wire in the enterprise as the connectivity of choice. And we are the only manufacturer right now producing uh, Wi-Fi infrastructure equipment with the capacity and the resilience and the robustness to do that. We've designed this product to be the equivalent of a chassis-based switch for Wi-Fi. It's designed with line cards that are replaceable and upgradable. It's designed with a, a central switch that can be upgraded and and, uh, and continuously uh, modified to the point where the thing has a five-year, seven-year lifespan and can go through multiple technology cycles. We really see that the next major networking upgrade cycle in the enterprise isn't going to be everybody spending a ton of money to move from 100 meg Ethernet to a gig Ethernet to the desk. I think the more important one and the one the logical choice is going to be to take that, those dollars for the next upgrade cycle and move to pervasive Wi-Fi throughout the enterprise. There are going to be too many people walking around in the enterprise carrying devices like the one you are and has Wi-Fi enabled, and they're going to be asking themselves, hey, this works at home. How come not here? 
and enterprise IT is going to be overwhelmed with people that are going to expect the same Wi-Fi coverage and service and robustness in the office as their, their uh, employees get at home, and they're going to be forced to do this. And for potential applications such as, let's say, super high-capacity video like telepresence or I guess eventually we're going to see 3D video, those sorts of things you could wire up if you have to, right? So you might have certain apps that could be wired. If you have to, but with .11N technology deployed in this fashion with enough radios in the air, that's a piece of cake over the air to do that stuff as well. And what kinds of throughput have you seen with, with N? With .11N, uh, single users can get 200 megabits per second TCP throughput. So and so that's in the real world, not just theoretical. It's in the real world. And, you, and what we're seeing is even in high-density situations where you've got lots of users, uh, individual users are still getting speeds that match uh, Ethernet to the desktop today. Well, it's, it's extremely impressive. Yeah, we've done a lot of work, or deployments, I should say, in architectural firms where they're transferring large CAD files, mm -hmm. as well as in the entertainment industry. We've uh, deployed this into various studios down here in uh, Hollywood uh, where they're actually starting to use it um, to, to track different things, to upload videos. I mean, some pretty large bandwidth type of applications, and they're getting rid of the wired because you figure you're a studio and um, you've got various films coming through, and to have everything chained on the wired side for every single film that comes through it gets extremely costly. So they can put one of these Wi-Fi arrays up in the studio, and they're done, and they don't have to, to worry about all the wire being pulled anymore. It's very exciting. Also, healthcare, hospitals, radiology departments, huge file sizes. Much easier to have a doctor walk around with a notebook and be able to suck these files down without having to go find a jack. So it's happening. The world's moving wireless. In our mind, it's uh, just a matter of time. Well, thank you both for your time today. That was great.